Hello and welcome back to Antolifer. Today, there's a new setup in the background. That's not what we're here to talk about. What we are here to talk about is that I'm making a naturalistic formicarium. And this is how it's gonna look. And I hope you like this little tutorial. So the first thing you're gonna need is of course an aquarium. You can also use a big plastic container or some other stuff. Then you're gonna need some clay balls and then some netting. I'll talk more about this in a minute. And then you're gonna need some of these, this coconut brick thing I got here. And I'll also talk a little bit about that later. And then of course you're gonna need some dirt. So when you have all of these things, you're gonna start by taking all of your clay balls and just putting into the aquarium. And these clay balls are meant to simulate rocks. So when the water sinks down into the earth, it would then come down to these rocks here and then evaporate slowly instead of molding in top, on top in the dirt. These clay balls are just very light comparison to normal rocks. And the end result should look something like this. I have around one to three centimeters all the way around in the whole aquarium and this is just so the water will sink down in this little section so what we're gonna do next is take this netting here I'm not sure what it's called it's a very thin material and water can come right through it because it's filled up with holes but dirt can't seep through it and that's the important part so the dirt cannot come through so the water will come through and not the dirt and that's here we have the separation you can also use something like a mosquito net. So it doesn't matter how precise it is right now, as long as it's pretty much within the aquarium, then you can take the dirt later and kind of refine it. And now it's time for moisting up this coconut brick thing. And that's simply because it's very hot right now. And if you just put it in water and wait around 30 minutes or so, it should be soaked up with water. And this creates a very, very dirty material. And by dirty, I mean it's all over my hands, as you can see. But then you just simply take it out of this bowl I have right here and then just start putting it into the aquarium. So this is a layer that will suck up most of the moist and the water and also filter it a bit. And then if there's even more water, I will just then sink down into the clay ball layer. And this, you need a good two, three centimeters as well. I may have used a little bit too much, but it won't harm because it's just a filtration layer. Now, some ants may start to dig in this and that's also okay. That's why we have the netting layer right below. So it's just kind of a secondary layer to the netting and the clay balls. And now it's just time to put in some dirt. Now I used some plant dirt, but I also mixed it up with some normal dirt that I found outside. My neighbor had a little construction site thing where they dug a big hole and I just got over there and took a big bucket of this and then put it down in the yard world. Now you may see there's a lot of plants and grass and that's also okay because this will slowly rotten down in the dirt and that will kind of kickstart the whole ecosystem. So. I'm filtering out the biggest pieces of these grass things, but all the small ones I'll leave in there. I'm also taking out some big rocks that I also found, because we don't want any big rocks. The good thing about this dirt right here is that I just took it outside, so it's first of all it's free, and second of all it has a lot of microbiology, hopefully, with some mites and some different kind of micro animals that you need in a little biodiverse formicarium and this is just so everything inside the formicarium is its own little life circle so you can feed them everything and it should just keep cleaning itself so when you feel like you have enough dirt inside I have around I would say 10 centimeters and this is a maybe a bit too much dirt but then it's then time to put in some plants now I bought this one plant I've already planted in the background because it was it didn't need that much moist and it just need a little bit of sunlight so it would be perfect for this little formicarium. The important thing is that you know which plants you're getting in comparison to what species. If you're getting a Campanotus species, they will have a very dry area and then you shouldn't really 
get moisty plants. But in my formicarium, I'm gonna get some ants that require a lot of moist. So it would be perfect to have plants in here. That's also why I'm planting a lot of plants. And this is just kind of a designing phase. So I decided to kind of have some plants in the background and then I actually had one plant too many and I didn't really know where to put it so I just ended up putting it at the left corner. But the important thing with these plants is that you also completely cover up the roots because if there's too many exposed roots of the plant it may die. So it's very important that you dig it proper down. So lastly I had a little old plane. I was it was actually meant to be for fish, but I decided, you know, that's kind of a fun little thing to put in there. So I also put it over here at this foresty area. So now I kind of had a forest area on the left side and a more open part on the right side. I also replanted two of my rocks that I originally found in my bucket of dirt to just kind of separate the plants a little bit. And it's also good for the ants because then they can live under the rocks. And lastly, I also added a little feeding dish, bowl, well that's easier to give hunting and stuff like that if you don't want to mess up the whole formicarium. And now it was time to put in my moist and heat sensor. I didn't quite know where to put it but I ended up putting it here on the left top side of the outworld and no really reason except that it was easier for me. So this is the final look, as you see the plains and the rocks and the feeding dish. So I'm very satisfied with how it looks. Maybe I bought a little bit too big of a feeding dish, uh, but you can also always remove it. I was considering putting a little layer of sand in here, but for now I haven't. When the ants finally move in, I can still put it in because the ants don't really mind. As you see, this is the layer of dirt. So you can see the film, the black film really get pushed down when there comes all of this dirt on top. And now it's time to add the isopods and other kind of small animals that will help clean up the formicarium. So I'm just adding a few isopods and I would also like to add in some springtails but I don't quite know how to do that. So at the moment I have put an apple outside to hopefully make the springtails and other animals eat the apple and then I'll just put it inside. But for now I also put some apple inside so the isopods could eat and other animals that may be inside of the formicarium. So it's now it's time to just enjoy your new formicarium. I ended up putting my little humidity sensor like this and I also made a kind of a fence on top because I have cats and I don't want them to jump into it and I didn't want to put the aquarium lid on because when I did that the moist came all the way up because this is a new nest and as you also can see it's very moist on the back side this is where the sun hits this coconut brick i put in is very moisty at the moment because it sucked all of this water in so i would recommend that you wait a few days until you move, make your ants move in just to get the hydration layer a bit down but when you are gonna hydrate it you're gonna use something like this because this is very simple to just go down and spray on the specific locations so that's it for this tutorial a little note is when you water the tank or the formicarium with your spray, be careful that you don't hit the anti-ant protection layer because if that gets wet, it will get destroyed and the meaning of it will disappear. And it could be a little bit dangerous if you just spray all over the place and suddenly the ants can escape without you knowing. The other thing is that when you're spraying, also be careful because it gets all over the place when you get the, the one I get. But that can also get on the glass if you have an aggressive ant species or not. They might be hard to clean from the inside because the ants can attack you. But yeah, that's been it for this little tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in another video. Bye!